Alléluia. 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 Please uh, be seated. First of all, I thank God the Father for what he continually doing in the life of every one of us as believers. And what he continually doing in the life of this church, Celestia Church of Christ worldwide. And also, I thank our Lord Jesus Christ, the one that has perfected salvation in our lives. is the one that died, shed his blood, so that we can be cleansed, so that we can receive the Holy Spirit. And also, I thank the power of the Holy Spirit, the one that lives inside every believer worldwide. This is the reason why Christ has come. Christ came because we were what? We were naked. We were empty. Without who? Without God. And he was living. He told us, he told the church, he told his disciples, because the first church was the, the first apostle. He told them to do what? To go into the world and establish what he has established in the life of the disciple. So that the whole world can know that they are empty. They need God in their life. Because when you look into the nations worldwide, either the United States of America, Canada, any country in Europe, or any country in Africa, especially Nigeria, you find that God is what? It's empty. We wonder why every government in every nation, they are not perfect. Because there is no way you can rule successfully without God. Because the flesh cannot perfect anything in the world. The flesh is selfish. It's about me, 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 me. And that is why we found ourselves, especially where we came from, that every government is empty, naked, without power, without the Holy Spirit. And that is why we need to impact the nation with the message of our Lord Jesus Christ, the message of the kingdom of God, the message of heaven. Every humanity, they need what? They need God. They need the Holy Spirit. And our, I love one of our songs. I think that was the third or fourth song. Jesu, is it Jesu Yotiti Aye Nkoniye? Did we sing that? Jesu, uh, I think the third or fourth song. If you can bring it up for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially the one that said, the time is what? It's shut. My, thank you, my mother. In the Lord. He said, the time is short. If you can read it, I will love it. God of joy has brought down joy. God of joy has brought down joy. God of joy has brought down joy. Uh -huh. We thy children burst with joy. Mm -hmm. We thy children burst with joy. Hallelujah will be our song. Today and evermore. The, 
I think the second to the last verse, where he said, the time is short. Ye elders rise up in singing. Yeah. Uh -huh. The remaining time is ah, short. That's it. Ye elders rise up in singing. The remaining time is short. Praise the Jesus. Praise the Jesus. For the light of descending. He said the remaining time is short. What remaining time is he talking about? He's talking about Christ. Can come any moment. He can come just now. And if he comes, what is, is going to happen? Everybody that has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, you will what? You will be raptured. But if you, are, if you don't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, you cannot be raptured. And this is very, very critical. It's not about how many years you live on earth that matters. It is about how well how you have received the Holy Spirit and how and what you have done with that power of the Hindu or the Holy Spirit in your life. What are you doing every moment of your life? Are you touching the lives of father? Are you impacting the lives of father in your job, in your business? The people you meet in your neighborhood. This is critical. And the calling, especially of all the church, is the same. But the calling of Celestia Church of Christ, this is the church that we do what? Huh? Clean the world. Are we cleaning the world? Have we received what we make up to cleanse the world? Then what are you doing with that power of the Holy Spirit in you? We tend to lay emphasis upon the things that doesn't matter. To God. We fight about the things that is meaningless to God Almighty. Are you faithful in everything that you do day by day? Are you faithful to God? Because when we go into these two lessons of today, it's about faithfulness. The first lesson was talking about um, King David. A man out of God's own earth. A man that was called from the wilderness. A man that was rejected. He was in the farm. But all of his brethren, they were at home rejoicing with the father. And that faithful prophet of God came. They want to annoy, because that's the king of Israel has to come from that family. Has to come from the house of Jesse. Then he came. He have six or seven brothers. And they passed through in front of 
Samuel. And each of them passed. And Samuel said, none of them, none of these six, there's no spirit of kinship upon their lives, upon their head. Then Samuel asked Jesse, said, do you have any other child? Oh, they, oh is, then he remember that he has a son in the farm. He said, go and bring him. He was a forgotten child in the farm. They brought him. As soon as he was entering, somebody said, yeah, that is the king of Israel, the king of Judah. And he was anointed. After being anointed, <laughs> you would think things would be rosy for him. He spent another 14 years Before he became king. And we advise you. As a man or woman of God. When you are being given a prophecy. That you become somebody in life. You become this. You become that. That is when you have to go on your need. On your needs. And continue to pray fast. Go into the word of God. You know David suffer in the hands of Saul. Saul wants to kill him. The more, the more he tried to kill him, the more God elevated David in power, in authority. In those days, the king, they go to war. No, the, the, I'm sorry to say, all of this useless king that we have in Africa. They go to war. When David go to war, he kills in thousands. And finally, he was in throne. He was made the king of Israel, the king of Judah. And Saul was after him. And finally, Saul himself betrayed God because God instructed him that certain things you should do and certain things you should not do. Kill all the animals. Kill all the vegetation. He went and kept part of it. And upon all, all that, God still have mercy upon him. His life. He went and consoled a family spirit. And God said, you should not have any other God for me. But he did. When you read that area, he said, God, uh, they said, Saul was killed because he consulted the power of wishes and wisdom. Saul was not key because he disobeyed God because he became part of the vegetation and uh, the animal. But because he believed God cannot help him. The spirit of God cannot help him. Then he went to Babalawo. Like most of the prophets that we have nowadays, most of the pastors Especially where we come from. God is not sufficient for them. Some of them, they go and enter the Ogoni, Ogoni fraternity. And they want to do the work of the ministry of Christ. 
They want to consult God without power. It's impossible. There's only one power that Christ brought, and that is the power of the Holy Spirit in the life of humanity. And we that are called evangelists, pastors, prophets, teachers, apostles, deacons, any man or woman in the church, we should do the same thing to impact that power in the life of humanity. That's our calling. That is the only calling. Touch the life of people out there. Let them be converted in back into God's government. Are, we, are you hearing me? It's not only converting them to your church that matters. What matters to God is making them to receive what Christ has brought so that they can be part of the kingdom of heaven when they are on earth. It's not about having thousands of people in your church. And licking their pocket. It's not about who can donate one million. That we have so many of them in, the, in, the, in, in Africa. Licking people's pockets. If you have thousands of people in your church, how many of them have received the Holy Spirit? How many of them have been converted to, into God's government, into God's kingdom? That is what matters to God. When we go into these two lessons, you will see a lot of things that will shake your head. Let's read it. The first lesson. The first lesson is, is uh, first lesson is taken from the book of Second Samuel. Me, me fi boshet. I know it's hard to pull. <laughs> yes, <laughs> me fi boshet. Mm -hmm. So grandson also went down to meet the king. He had not taken care of his feet or trimmed his mustache or washed his clothes from the day the king left. Allelu oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You remember Saul and David. Saul was a king. I just explained to all that he disobeyed God and he died. After he died, David now become king of Israel, king of Judah. Now, we are mentioning, then there's a son of who? Of Saul. Who is that son? No? Jonathan. He was like this to who? David. And because of the love that he has for Daniel, I mean, for Jonathan, he promised that any descendant of so or of Jonathan, he will protect them. He will feed them. And now, Miss, uh, uh -huh. Saul grandson. Saul grandson. That means the son of Jonathan. Uh -huh. Also went down to meet the king. Uh -huh. He had not taken care of his feet mm -hmm. or trimmed his mustard mm -hmm. or washed his clothes mm -hmm. from the day the king left until the day he returned safely. Hallelujah. Safely from where? From, from what? 
So because now Cain came in peace, now he's happy. But he did not wash his clothes. He did not do anything that we do. Nowadays, we want to look good. But he was, he was deep in, in his heart. He was feeling in his mind. He wants the king to come in peace. He doesn't want the king to die. And finally, the king now came. See. Now, he went to meet the king. He said, huh? My lord the king, since I, your servant, am lame, I said, I will have my donkey saddled and will ride on it so I can go with the king. But Ziba, my servant, betrayed me. Hallelujah. We find that this man, the grandchild of Saul, was a lame man, was crippled. Probably, uh, maybe in, in those days, they, they don't have a wish. Nowadays, we be on wish. And somebody lied to him. Who is that person? We just heard. Ziva, lie to him. Read on. And he asked, uh, but Ziba, my servant, betrayed me. And he has sland slandered your servant to my lord, the king. Mm -hmm. My lord, the king, is like an angel of God. Mm -hmm. So do whatever you wish. Mm -hmm. All my grandfather descendants deserve nothing but death from the, my lord, the king. Hallelujah. So this grandchild of Saul was telling David that all of his descendants, they decide what? Death. Because of what Saul has did to David. But the grace of Jonathan, that Jonathan now become the best friend of David. Now David now have mercy upon the grandchildren. But now, after the king now has survived the war, so the grandchild of Saul now went to David in Jerusalem, telling them what happened. Because this man lied to him. Probably he wants to get him killed. He wants David to have to change his mind. The promise that he has with, the, with, with Jonathan. Maybe he wants David to change his mind so that he can kill uh, me, uh, Mel to kill this man. See, some, most of these uh, names in the Bible, they are hard to pronounce. <laughs> but what happened? Read on. All my grandfather's descendants deserve nothing but death from <laughs> the Lord the King. But you gave your servant a place among those who eat at your table. Hallelujah. So, I want you to, to hear that. Where do they eat? At your table. What, where do they eat? At David's at table. The, the, the table of the king. So there is no separation between David and Jonathan's offspring. He treat them the way he will treat his own children. They eat, they will set table. Long. They will eat the same thing. Not nowadays that we, <laughs> may God forgive every one of us. Especially in the country that we come from. We look at other people as irrelevant. We make them servants. We make them to serve us. Even to eat from what we eat, 
It's impossible. We gave them remnants of food. But the Bible is telling them that they eat at the same table. You serve yourself with the king. I think that will be what will happen to us when Christ comes. The Lord's Supper. Eat with Christ. There's no discrimination from God. That is why all of the time when I come here or when I'm in the media preaching, I tell them the truth. All of this thing we lay emphasis on, God hates it. All this thing you wear, where you sit. This seat, same thing. You sit right here, it's different, it's different, it's different. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. I have the same Spirit. Is my Spirit different from you? Hallelujah. And the Bible says, He that is in you. So why are we making ourselves to be greater? Why? Gbogbo wa ni yoduro ni waju oluwa ati we ati ago a o si rojo wa gbogbo aye lo se ti won si kuno ogore elese oruko jesu Important anointment. I will talk about anointment. My my brother in the Lord. Stand up. The most important anointment. That is it. The first anointment. We talk about all these kings in the Bible. We talk about David. We talk about Saul. We talk about Solomon. All the Jeroboam. All the kings of Judah. Because every king in Jerusalem come from the tribe of Judah. All of them, they have anointment. How many times? So what right do I have to make any more appeals to the king? The king said to him, why say more? I order you and Ziba to divide the land. Mephibosheth said to the king, let him take everything now that my lord the king has returned home safely. Did we hear that? A, there was a land. Maybe that land was in dispute. Between Zeba and Mesob uh, Buzet. And this was presented before David. And what happened? Read, read that again. 
Mephibosheth said to the king, let him take everything now that my lord the king has returned. Hallelujah. How many of us can do that nowadays? We don't know how big the land was. Then he said, because you came, David, you came back alive. You came back in peace. Let him take the land. But nowadays, we are after those material things. We want to kill. Even they are killing now in Africa. They kill to possess wealth. They kill to possess land. The land or any property that you have, as soon as you are absent from this earthly realm, that's it. Nothing you take with you. You might be a trillionaire. You might have lands all over the places. As soon as you pass away, that's it. Maybe I've related to us uh, way back. There was this king in Asia. He was wealthy, rich, filthy rich. He has so many properties. He has jets. He has all these custom-made cars. Then, on top of that, he had goals that was carved in blocks. I've never seen that before. I saw that for the first time. The, you know that w uh, 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 when you have uh, bricks, the bricks that uh, they used to build houses, that is how they carved all the goals. They, the goals were laid down Cover about two blocks. Cover like two streets. And the man died. He was a Muslim. And you know when a Muslim dies, he has to be buried on that day. And they don't buy coffin. And they just, they brought uh, this white garment. They wrap him up. They put it on a mat. And they roll it. And they throw, they throw him to the pit. And that was it. Telling us that Nothing that we bring to this earthly that we are taking with us. The most important thing in the first place, be faithful. Be faithful. In everything you do in life, be faithful. Be faithful to your God. Be faithful to people. And be faithful to yourself. Because if you are not faithful to yourself, you cannot faith be faithful to anybody. No. Second lesson. Second lesson is taken from the book of James. That, that my faithful my apostle. The book of James, chapter 2. My brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. must not show favor, favorit, favoritism. <laughs> Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in fleety old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here is a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, 
you stand there or sit on the floor by my face. Hallelujah. 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 I think I just explained that. Take for example. We had that. One of the most faithful musicians from Nigeria, Davido. Who, who is? Whiskey and who is? Bonaboy and who is? Olamide? Huh? Ashake? I see, God has blessed that nation with so many musicians. That has not happened in any nation before. If one of them should enter this place, <laughs> where is the seat of the papa? This one right here, right? Or that one right there? We will say, okay, ah, David O has come over, born about. Remove that thing. Come and sit here. We will forget this is an altar. I'm, I'm just talking generally. Because all those celebrities, they are so great to us. Even more than a man of God that doesn't even, even wear nothing. Because in all of those positions that I've mentioned, they just have talents. They have gifts. And they have perfected their gifts. And their gift now is making room for them in the society. They become a celebrity. Now, we want to show favoritism to them. Even in the church, we have been showing favoritism. Even in this uh, anointing that we have been given. Because somebody is rich, because that rich man has been pouring money in our churches. From brother, we give him, we give, uh, there's a uh, rank that called Father in the law now. <laughs> Supreme and Valent Jealous. And as soon as you give him supreme knowledge, evangelist, we now he become what? Ah, my <laughs> buga. Now he can buga. Now he want to buga into the altar. It doesn't matter if he, he knows how to pray or knows anything in the scripture. Well, <laughs> we will not see well in the name of Jesus. The peace of God that passes all understanding shall continue to perfect everything that concerns the, our journey. But we need to tell ourselves all these things. And that is why we are believed to walk Christ as perfected in this church. If I have my way, and Christ has been telling us, but we don't listen. Everybody, there's nothing that ranking and falling. Just wear white. When you go to the book of Revelation, it's all what? 
And those that are not wearing white, they are wearing, they are not wearing, uh, I shall go, they wear something else. But they have been converted. I believe those are the people in all other, all other churches. Maybe when you read the book of Revelation chapter 7, you see. There is no discrimination in the kingdom of heaven. After I saw four angels mm -hmm. standing at the four corners of the earth, mm -hmm. holding back the four winds mm -hmm. of the earth mm -hmm. to prevent any wind from blowing mm -hmm. on the land or on the sea or any tree. Mm -hmm. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, mm -hmm. having the seal of the living God. Mm -hmm. He said, he said out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the four heads of the servants of our God. Then I heard the numbers of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of God, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Le Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulon, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. After this, I looked, and before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hand. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God. Hallelujah. You see how the Bible describes our final destination? First of all, he number all the 12 tribes of Israel. 12,000. 12,000. Those that have been converted back into God's kingdom. And after that, he number people that we cannot number them. From all over the nation with different languages. Then after that, he numbered those that are wearing what? White robe. Where were they standing? Huh? They were standing in front of the throne of God. Before, who, who is the lamp? Christ. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. Hallelujah. 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 Revelations 19.8. 19, uh, yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Praise the Lord. For the Lord our God, mm -hmm. the Almighty reign. Mm -hmm. Let us be glad and rejoice, mm -hmm. and let us give honor to him. Mm -hmm. For the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. And his bride has prepared herself. Mm -hmm. She has given, she has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear. <laughs> but the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy. Hallelujah. The fine linen. It didn't say pink. It didn't say uh, what color is that? Gray. We have uh, blue, huh? Yellow, then we have a, a, what color again? Green, what color again? Brown, what again? Purple, what again? We have, huh? Eh? Kireko. Oh, Vanerie, okay. That, that, <laughs> that name from, <laughs> sometimes, I don't know where they got that name from. They are wearing that. 
by the time we know it, we will run out of colors. We will run out of colors. What? You are naked. You are empty. You are not going anywhere. Your regalia cannot help you. Your senior evangelist cannot help you. Your superior evangelist cannot help you. Your venerable cannot help you. Now we start counting. We uh, sometimes I will look at it. Is this normal? Where have they seen that in the scripture? Maybe I haven't got to the area where all those things are being written. Maybe I will still find it in the scripture. Even there is no senior evangelist. There is nothing like a sister evangelist. The Bible just say there are five gifts. Five gifts of the son. Who is the son? Christ. Christ. That Christ has given to perfect the smooth running of the church. When they say a gift, that means it's given to you freely. You don't pay for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a gift. And the Bible says, it says there are five of them. The least of the gift is prophecy. And a lot of people now, they are prophets. Not only in this church, they are everywhere. They are you think that they don't, it's not given them by Christ. So they call themselves prophets. And they are using it to chop money. They have for a choir, maybe they, they have washed their feet. So that they can see in the spiritual realm. And they will be lying and lying and lying to you. They see the, they can see. And one thing about such a gift, it doesn't perfect salvation. You can see whatever you want to see, and it doesn't give victory. You cannot pray. For people to receive healing. To receive victory. You can never, never deliver people from their bondage. Even most of them, they even put bondage in the life of people. In their churches. The other gift is the gift of Teaching. Like most of the time, I love teaching. This third one, evangelist. 
to evangelize all over the places. And when you have the spirit of evangelism, the gift of evangelism, most of your job is not where? Huh? It's not in the church. Hallelujah. It's outside the church. And now we took that evangelism because we know we can make money off of it. As soon as you come in, we give you, we give you. And most of these people, they don't know anything about the doctrine of the church. They are far away from the scripture. Then we have the gift of pastor. In this church, the only person that we can call a pastor is the head of the church, which uh, maybe Christ intentionally do that or maybe not. We call Papa Shopa a pastor of the church. But I believe there are a lot of people in Celestial Church of Christ that God has given the faith to be a pastor. Hallelujah. And also we have apostle. The spirit of apostle is given to those people that will be able to grow people in the church. Should be able to teach. Should be able to perfect everything that concerns the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. Put value in the church. Grow people to be prophets, to be evangelists, to be teachers, to be prophets, to be maybe apostle or pastor. So that they can perfect the message of our Lord Jesus Christ out there. The greatest thing that church uh, that Christ has perfected before he left is to make all the, uh, the, 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 the disciples. They were all students. He grew them. And most of them, they become what? Apostles. The reason why you have to come to church is to learn. To be taught. Christ taught all of the disciples for how many years? How many years? Huh? Ah, you don't know. He taught them for three and a half years. And he w when he was leaving, what did he tell them? Huh? Uh huh. And after he died, in the third day, he rose in the book of John, John 20. When he popped to them, they met him in the Galilee. The first thing he did in the book of John 20, you can read by yourself. 21 and 22. After he said this, uh -huh. he showed them his hand uh -huh. inside. Uh -huh. The disciples were overjoyed uh -huh. when they saw the Lord. Uh -huh. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me. As my Father in heaven has sent me. I'm sending you. Now I'm sending you the twelve. Uh -huh. And with 
And with that, uh -huh. he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. 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 After he said that, he said, He breathed Holy Spirit into their lives. He breathed the Holy Spirit into their life. And he said, as my father he has sent me, now I'm sending you to where? There are two places in all of the Bible. One in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament. The one in the New Old Testament happened in the book of Genesis. Chapter 2. If we read verse 4 to 7. Where the breath of life was given. The first one that was given, we lost it. Because of disobedience. This is the account of the heavens. This is the account of the heavens. And the earth. And the earth. When they were created. When they were created. When the Lord God has made the earth. The Lord God made the earth. And the heavens. And the heavens. And no shrub on the field has uh -huh. yet been appeared on the earth. There is nothing grow on the earth. Because what? And no plant of the field has yet sprung no up. No plant at all. Why? For the Lord God has not sent rain on the earth. Because the Lord God has not sent rain. And there because was if, if it rains, what will happen? There was no man on huh? earth. Vegetation will grow. And there was no man that will to work the ground. To walk on the, on the ground. Read on, man. The stream came up from the earth and watered the whole surface now of the ground. Now the stream now came from where? From the whole surface of the ground. Uh huh. The Lord God formed the man uh -huh. from the dust of the ground. Now he wants to create man so that there will be man to, to take care of the vegetation. Read on, man. And breathe into his nostrils. Now he breathed into his nostrils. The bread of life. The bread of life. And the man became a living being. And the man became what? A living being. Uh huh. Now the Lord has planted a garden in the east. That's it. That's it. That was the first breath that we all have in the book of Genesis, chapter 2. But when we get to the book of Genesis, chapter 3, we lost it. And now Carl has to come. We just read it. He died. The third day, he rose. And breathed back the same breath. In Genesis chapter 4. Uh, chapter 2 verse 4. Breathed into their life. Every one of the disciples. And say, now, go into the world. And perfect the same thing in the life of people. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The lesson we are reading, second lesson, read on. Let's finish that so that we can finish our time. We're in the book of James. Yes. And, boy, you have dishonored. Uh, I just want to say that now. Listen, my dear. No, yeah, is good seat for you, but you say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith? And to inherit the kingdom, he promised those hmm. who love him. <laughs> but you have dishonored the poor. Uh, hallelujah. She just read something that is so significant in the life of humanity. Either you are poor and rich, Christ has come for one purpose, and that is to give you who? What? The kingdom of God. Read on. 
But you have dishonored the poor. Hmm. It, is it not the rich who are exploit, exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into the court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble names of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in the scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favority, favoritism, you sin and convicted by the law as lawbreakers. Mm. For whoever keeps the old law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Hallelujah. Do we hear that? God wants us to judge accordingly. Do not favor the riches over the poor. Because Christ has brought the same thing to every one of us. It was the mercy, 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 mercy. If you don't understand everything that I've been saying all along, mercy, mercy of God upon the rich, upon the poor, that made us to be converted into God's kingdom. What is mercy? Mercy is taking away the thing that you deserve and giving you back. Things that you don't deserve. You remember all those sinful habits. You have been committed. Especially, okay, like me. I'm now 71 years old. In January. Okay. Now, thank you, man. Now, look at the sins that have been com uh, committed since I know my right from the left. Maybe age of uh, ten or fi five. Look at the, all the things I've been doing. And God in his infinite mercy grafted me back into his kingdom. So now I'm in his kingdom because of the hindrance of the Holy Spirit in me. So if I don't show the same thing that God has given unto me to others, who am I? Huh? <laughs> if I'm not perfecting the same thing that God has perfected in my life into others' people, If I say, oh, this is my people. This is poor people. Rich people. I want to work with the people, uh, uh, rich people because uh, I want money. I have favor. I have favor people in every area of my life. Either in my job, in my business, in my church, So, God wants us to be merciful and faithful to him. So, connecting the two lessons together is about faith. Be faithful in all what you do in life. Jehovah. 
Jesus Christ, Holy Michael, our entire of ages. You are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Immortal, Invisible, and Only Wise God. Oh, yes. We thank you, we adore you, we glorify you for what you have perfected in the life of your children thank through you, this Lord. message. We are all sinners, but you look unto every one of us with mercy and brought us back through the power of the Hindu and Holy Spirit. And you converted all back into your government, into your kingdom. Father Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Continue to strengthen us in your power. Amen. In your authority. Amen. So that we can do the same thing to the life of humanity. Amen. So that we can put values. So that we can convert people back into your kingdom. Because that is the ultimate goal for any human being. Amen. To be in your kingdom so that we all can live forever and ever. Amen. Look unto every one of us here. Use us and pack all greatly so that we can be able to go into the world and release the message Amen. into their lives. Amen. We thank you tonight thank and you today. Lord. We appreciate you. Hallelujah. Look unto the, this church. Celestial Church of Prayer Worldwide. Especially this region and the diocese. We have failed you. There's nothing we can do without your power. Father Lord, pour your spirit upon all our lives. Pour your spirit so that we can change. So that we ourselves can come back to you and do the needful thing that you have established this church. Amen. Because this church has been established to cleanse the world. Father Lord, if there's any power, any authority, any dominion of Satan, any conspiracy in the heavenly, any conspiracy in the heartly realm, any conspiracy beneath the heartly realm that might have been impacting this church worldwide, Father Lord, I command your fire to come down from heaven and divorce such power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because it is written, the right of the Lord do it violently. The right of the Lord exalted. Holy. Let your right hand consume every powers of darkness in celestial church of Christ. Amen. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We appreciate you. Thank you, Lord. We adore you. At the end, Every one of us in here, young and old, male and female, may our names be written in the book of life. Amen. In Jesus' name have I prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Let us be on our knees. A short, sudden prayer. Over. Holy. Jesus Christ. Holy. Holy Michael. Holy. Lord, we have humbled our spirit before thee to embrace your word into our lives so that our lives will be meaningful. Lord, as we have done this today, let it run into our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Your spirit that we make us to go to the world and escalate your word, may you destroy it upon us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Both the summoner and the listeners, Lord, let us achieve being in your kingdom at the end of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name.